What's going on, guys? It's Mr. Hansen uh, at Mr. Hansen 414 today. Today's a geometry lesson day. We're going to do lesson 1.4. It's about reasoning and proof. So the way I view this unit, this lesson, I mean, is you need to be able to prove things and justify why you're right and why the steps you took were the right steps. So imagine you're a lawyer. Imagine you are uh, creating a persuasive essay. You need to prove your case. Um, so in math class and geometry, you need to prove that a, a theorem is correct or that angle measure is what you say it is. So you need to make sure that you have evidence to prove your statement. So let's get started. All right. So here we are. Here's the lesson. Let's get started. Um, reasoning and proof. So we have the essential question. Let's zoom in just a little bit. How do you go about proving a statement? Think about that. Think about how you do that in your own life. And now we'll figure that out by the end of this lesson. We've got some, some verbiage, some vocab that you need to know. Uh, you need to know what a conjecture is. It's a statement that's believed to be true. So if I make a conjecture that I think um, Case is a good high school, you probably believe that. Um, and then you use your reasoning to figure out whether that conjecture is true or not. You use inductive reasoning that you look at specific cases, and we'll talk about examples of that. And then deductive, using logic to prove that all cases are true. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look. Um, get my drawing tool set up. Let's go with the blue. It's a blue day today. Um, <clears throat> so let's make a conjecture about the sum of three consecutive counting numbers. So if you start with one, what's next? Well, it would be two, and then we'd add three. So the question is, do you, uh, can you divide? Is it divisible by three? Well, let's figure out what we get. We get six. Can you divide six by three? Yeah. 6 divided by 3 equals 2, so that checks out. Uh, write the sum of the next 3, starting with 2. Well, we can start at 2 this time. We go up 1, go up 2. Is that divisible by 3? Well, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3, so that checks out. We're checking out our logic. So let's complete the statement. So we're making conjecture that the statement that we believe is true. The sum of three consecutive counting numbers is divisible by three. Do we know that's true 100% yet? I don't know. But we have two cases. I think that's a pretty good start. So um, postulates are statements you accept as true. So like... We talked about the segment addition, the angle bisector, postulates, stuff like that from the last couple sections. Those are just things that we know are true. And a theorem is a statement that you can prove using logical steps. So if we have like the Pythagorean theorem, that thing's a bulletproof uh, example. If you can prove it, and I attached a video for this playlist. Um, and if you aren't in my class, just Google Pythagorean theorem proof, and you'll see some pretty cool stuff. I like the one with the water or the liquid. Super cool. Deductive reasoning, you need to use appropriate words, um, relationships, postulates, and other theorems that you may have. All right, so um, we've got another example. This time we're using deductive reasoning. So think of deductive. When I think of deductive, I think of detective. Um, it's based on logic. Uh, you, you, know, you draw from the evidence that you have. Um, I want to make sure I got all set up. Um, you know, it's it's got to make sense. You're not going to make no wild claims using deductive reasoning. So three consecutive counting numbers. We have n, n plus 1. Well, the next logical number would be n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2. n is just a number. It's a variable. The sum of three consecutive numbers can be written as 3n plus Three. N plus one, N plus one, N plus one, combine like terms. Um, 
the expression can be factored. Remember that factoring is basically undoing the Schroeder property. You pull a 3 out, you divide by 3, what's left? n plus 1. The expression is divisible by, well, you could divide everything by tree. 3 for all values of n. So the conjecture we made in step E, the sum of three consecutive numbers is divisible by three. That's what you're saying is a fact. Is it true or false? Well, we said that any counting number can be written as n plus one. So we figured out what three of them can be. It doesn't matter where you start. We checked that you can factor the three out. So yeah, that's, that's true. It's all good. So when you start seeing patterns, that's when you might want to make a conjecture. I mean, you see a number pattern, you see a pattern of logic, a pattern of how something behaves. You can say, all right, here's a conjecture. Um, let's take a look real quick at these, a counter example. I mean, it's obviously a, a, like a non-example. It's something that doesn't work. Uh, it shows that it's false. Now, our counter example is mainly used in inductive or deductive. Deductive reasoning is when you look at like the evidence that you have. Um, in inductive, you would look for like cases, like one case. All you need is one case to make it false. So like if you say, you know, you look at me, Mr. Hansen's a math teacher. All right. And you're like, well, he has glasses. So all math teachers wear glasses. That's your conjecture. If you find one math teacher that doesn't have glasses, does your conjecture hold up? No, you're, that's not going to work. Um, deductive reasoning to show that an angle is not acute. It's an ugly angle. Um, can you conclude that the angle is obtuse? So is there a, a, a statement, a conjecture that you can make that says any non-acute angle is obtuse? No, right? It could be obtuse. But it could also be right. It could also be straight. So just because it's not one doesn't mean it's one of the other. Now, if you have something that's a uh, like a, a coin, and we figured out, okay, we know that this coin is heads. If it's not heads, it's got to be tails. So that's how that works. All right, so looking at proofs now. Um, we have something called a conditional statement. If you know anything about programming, um, you've probably heard this before. Conditional statements are super important to understand in, in just life, really. If P, then Q. If this, then that. Um, P is your hypothesis and Q is the conclusion. So if this happens, then that means this. Um, try to really use that in your, like, your everyday language. So like, for example, if I drive to... Taco Bell and the open signs off. What's what could conclusion could I draw? If the open signs not on, Taco Bell's closed. Real easy. If it's Wednesday, Mr. Hansen's recording math content. So that's what I do on Wednesdays. I should start wearing pink on Wednesdays. Um, all right. So we have a conditional statement: if three x minus five equals thirteen, then x is six. So it's just a math way of saying things that you probably already say all the time. Um, but we have to be able to prove it. And, um, you know, we have the properties of equality. Here's my stance on this, guys. Yes, you want to know everything in this table. Could I tell you all those off the top of my head? No. Could I use them? Could I figure them out? Could I look at the transitive property of equality and recognize that, oh, if this is, the, if A is B, then and B is C, then obviously A is the same as C. I know what that means. If you happen to forget a, a way of it is, what it's called, as long as you understand to use these as your tools, these are your proven tools. These are ways to show that things are equal or not. Um, like in society, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, ways that we can prove or disprove the thoughts of inequality. Um, now we don't have like math terms for them, but they they exist. So think about that as we're going through this equality part. Um, there's all these things. So should you know them? Yes. Should you write them down? Yes. Will you remember them in five years? You might, probably not. All right. So deductive reasoning, we're deducing. I'm sure you've heard that before. I deduced it. 
Um, you guys got to make sure that every step you can justify. It's not enough just to get to the end. And this is why, like, if you ever had a math teacher that actually made you show their work, shout them out right now because this is important. So here we go. We're going to use the properties just for the step. So just you may not do it this way, but you're doing it right. Like, you know, to get rid of this four, this negative four, maybe precise with my language, math practice six, you would add on both sides. You would add four. And that's what that is. So you, if you wrote added four on both sides, because if you add four to both sides, you know, it keeps it balanced. You're doing this already. If you know to get rid of the three that's next to the X, you would divide by three. That's what the division property of equality is. And then the symmetric property of equality, which I can tell you right now, I don't have that memorized. Symmetric says if A equals B, then B equals A. Well, that's the same as saying, you know, X equals six. The same thing would be true if you said six equals X. Two plus three equals five. Five equals two plus three. It doesn't really matter the order. They, they, they're the same. So here's one to try on your own. So this would be a good time to pause. Um, and if you've got to do it, you know, your way, the, the layman's terms, go for it. Um, and then just try to work backwards. So like for this one, if I want to get rid of the 17, I would have to subtract it because it's positive. So I subtract 17 on both sides. Um, so I'm going to write that here. Subtract 17. And that's the subtraction property of equality. I'm just going to abbreviate because my handwriting ain't going to work for that. Um, and that's going to give me a negative 8. How do I get rid of that negative 4? The coefficient next to the x. Well, I would have to divide because that's multiplying. So I'm going to divide by negative 4. And that's the division property of equality. This, is this making you word yet? It shouldn't. Um, divide by negative 4 on both sides. We're going to get a positive 2. Positive 2. And that tells you, the sum, you know, it's a symmetric property again that x equals 2, 2 equals x. I think we're doing all right so far. All right. Um, we got some zebras. You're going to write each statement as conditional. So story time real quick. Zebra was my our oldest daughter's like theme. It was like purple color and like zebra theme. So I have to find a picture. It's probably old. But uh, me and my girlfriend we made a, like a like a legit two tier, maybe three tier, two tier, three tier fondant cake. We got we ordered a little special zebra cake popper. It was lit. Um, my baking skills are all right. My daughter, my daughter can bake. Um, anyways, so try to do these. Um, and I'll fill in for you. So if the animal is a zebra, um, if all animals belong to, if all zebras belong to the genus Ecus, I don't want to say that. Correct me, please, if I said that wrong. Uh, if an animal is a zebra, ooh, I wrote animal. Animal is a zebra. Well, what do you know? If it's a zebra, it belongs to The genus, Ecus. I can't think I'll say Ecus. Um, that's sloppy. My, I'm sorry. I mean, it is what it is, but it's sloppy. Um, I'm underlining if, then. All of these are if, then, if, then, if, then. The bill will pass if it gets two-thirds vote of the Senate. So what could you say? If the bill gets two-thirds vote of the Senate, then it'll pass. Make sure you guys know about your laws and vote, 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 vote. Tell everybody you know that's 18 to vote. Use deductive reasoning to solve the equation. Solve it. And you'll know, list the properties. List what you're doing. So for this one, um, you know, you would subtract three on both sides, divide by negative four on both sides, you get x equals two. So subtraction property and division property. All right, so this one, I like problems like this because you're not necessarily doing the work you're critiquing. Um, that's math practice three. You're using your reasoning. If x equals 2, then 2x equals 4. Well, what does that tell you? You know that if you multiply both sides by 2, so that's the multiplication prop. So I'm just going to write multiplication prop. Now, what I if, and if you've been with me for a while, you know I do MPE. Um, I like abbreviations. Um, this one, 5 equals 3a, therefore 3a equals 5. Do you remember that one? We've used this a couple times today. This is a symmetric. Yeah, so there, right. Symmetric prop. I'm just going to write symmetric for that one. Now, this one's a little spicy. If t equals 4, then 5t plus 7 equals 27. I don't know. But I think I have an idea. So I'm not sure. I'm going to go check my my table. Remember that table I had you guys write down? What are those? Looks like actually it's not adding. It's, I'm not doing any operations. It's definitely not reflexive. 
or transitive. So maybe the substitution. So the substitution property says if A equals B, then B can be substituted for A. So I know how I'm going to do this. I know the answer for T. I know the answer to the, uh, to the equation. The solution is 4. So I can put 4 in. So what's 5 times 4? 20. 20 plus 7 is 27. So I know that it's got to be the substitution property of equality. This one, 9 equals 4x and 4x equals m, then n, and then 9 equals m. So this is one of those things where if 1 equals 2, and I shouldn't use numbers for this, if a equals b, then b equals c. And that is your transitive. I really like transitive. I think transitive is pretty fun. So I am going to um, pause. I think I'm going to load this video up in parts because it's, it's getting long. So I'm going to load up part 1. So subscribe, and here comes part 2 next. So um, make sure you guys go back. Make sure you got everything you need for this.